Hello! Today we are talking about new releases for 2021. This is my second 2021 anticipated releases video. I always do one in the year before, kind of at the end of the year. I do one around this time, looking forward for the rest of the year, and then I do one sometime in the summer catching up on end of the year releases. So there's so many very exciting books to talk about. I've actually read um, some of these, especially kind of in March and April. So yeah, I have actual many thoughts for you on some of these. But without further ado, I'll just let you know that there's going to be a lot of books in this. In terms of front lists, like things that are coming out soon, I do tend to focus on nonfiction, mystery thriller, romance, and sci-fi fantasy. Those tend to be the kind of new releases that I am looking at. So just to let you know the kinds of books you are probably going to see in this. And yeah, I guess we'll just go ahead and dive on in because we got a lot of books to cover. Okay, starting on March 2nd, we've got a few that are coming out that day. Actually, like I think several. So first, Burning Girls and Other Stories by Veronica Chanoz is a speculative short fiction collection focused on themes of feminism, and a lot of them include elements of folk magic from Jewish traditions. So I read and very much enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars. And I would say this is very experimental. So if you are somebody who likes experimental short stories that are speculative, I think this would be a good one for you. So that's on March 2nd. Also on March 2nd is Down Comes the Night by Alison Saft, which is YA fantasy. Well, it's really YA fantasy romance, and it's got a mystery plot to it. So it is sort of an isolated close circle mystery. It's definitely an isolation trope um, where this healer who is the bastard daughter of the ruling family of her country, she is this gifted magical healer, and she is brought to this remote castle in a different country to try to heal people who are mysteriously falling ill, which we quickly realize is due to poisoning. And also there's a boy who maybe she's going to fall in love with. So this was like very sudsy fun, I thought. So if you like that vibe in YA fantasy, this one would be good for you. The Conductors by Nicole Glover comes out on March 2nd. And that is a, I guess I would call it alternative history with magic. And it is set in the post-Civil War uh, American South. Our two protagonists are Hetty and Benji, I believe are their names. And they basically were conductors on the Underground Railroad. And now they like solve crimes. They're a married couple. They were enslaved. They are Black. And in this version of the fantasy version of American history, um, there's only certain kinds of magic that Black people are allowed to do. So that's a thing. It's a very interesting debut novel. It didn't totally come together for me, but there's a lot of really cool elements in this one. So... That comes out on the second. Also on the second is one I have not yet read, but I got a copy from the publisher and that is Too Good to Be True by Carola Lovering. And I believe that this is a thriller that basically has like alternative timeline stuff going on in it where we are in the present with one girl who just got engaged to this almost too good to be true dude. And we are also following him when he was younger with another woman, Secrets thrillingness ensues. So this is on March 2nd. So if you like kind of different timelines, don't trust your partner, secrets from the past, all of that, this is going to be a thriller for you. And then the last one on March 2nd is one that I read and very much enjoyed, which is Every Last Fear by Alex Finlay. This is a Oh, gosh, what tropes does this have? This has true crime documentary trope with investigative journalists. This has a secrets from the past. This has a conspiracy theory kind of element to it. Basically, the setup for it is the main character ish. There's a few different point of view characters, but our main character in the present timeline is the second son of this family. His older brother was convicted of killing his high school girlfriend. He went away and there's been a true crime documentary made about him. And then the rest of his family was on vacation in Mexico and they also turn up dead apparently from an accident, but like, was it an accident? Is it a conspiracy? We don't know. And this was just really, if you're looking for something that's just like a page turnery thriller and those tropes sound good to you, this'll get the job done. I did really enjoy my time with this one. So four and a half stars here. I think that's the last one on March 2nd. There's so much happening. Oh no, actually, sorry. There's two others that I wanted to mention that come out on March 2nd. There's Clara and the Sun by Kazu Ishiguro, 
who wrote one of my, well, two actually of my all time favorite books. So just FYI there. And then also A Desolation Called Peace is the second in a duology from Arcady Martine. I very much enjoyed the first book in that, which was A Memory Called Empire. And it's basically sci-fi imperialist political machinations ensue kind of a book. And I really enjoyed its playing with sort of like what does being a person mean like consciousness, different kinds of consciousness, stuff like that. I thought it was really good. I don't know if I will continue with the second book because I actually really liked where the first one left off. But it is coming out on March 2nd. And I think is that everything? Okay, I think that's everything on March 2nd. March 2nd is like a big, a very big release date, apparently. March 9th is another book I absolutely loved, which is Actor Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. And this is the third and final book in the Brown Sisters trilogy, where we we have been watching each of these three sisters get paired off with their dude. This is Eve and she is kind of flighty and she can't seem to commit to anything and her family's kind of getting sick of it and they kind of give her some ultimatums which causes her to sort of through you know hijinks end up working at this bed and breakfast that our hero is running and he is very like very into running his bed and breakfast he's very type a about it he's also on the spectrum so that is a big part of his kind of characterization this is just super sweet super fun my second favorite in the trilogy and i think a really fitting ending to that little trilogy of books and then the only other one i was going to mention for march is the firekeeper's daughter by angeline Bully and I think I have an audio arc of this coming. I'm not sure how, anyway, I'm gonna definitely read this one because I really want to. It is YA, what I am understanding is it's basically like a YA mystery set on a reservation, I believe. There's like new boy in town kind of a thing. It leads to a mystery. I have heard really, really good things about this in the lead up to its release. I'm very excited for it. And frankly, look how gorgeous this cover is. If nothing else, that's also very enticing to me. So I am excited for that on on March 16th. And I think that is it for March. And then moving into April. Okay, we also got a lot happening in April. So on the 6th, we'll start with that we have The Duke Undone by Joanna Lowell, which I read and very much enjoyed. It is the setup is this like young genteel artist, she finds a duke naked in an alley. <laughs> She kind of gets somebody to come help him, but his hot bod is affixed in her memory. She ends up painting a portrait of him nude, and um, he ends up finding out about it, and love ensues from there. I thought the writing in this was really nice, and it had a lot of nice family dynamics in it. It's a little angstier than my personal taste tends to prefer, but really nice prose, very well written, and I think a little bit different um, than most historicals I read. So it was good. We also have To Love and To Loathe coming out that day, which is a historical romance from Martha Waters. And I would describe this as Regency rom-com. Martha Waters has a fantastic writing style, like just her, her authorial voice is lovely. It reminds me very much of Tessa Dare. So if you love Tessa Dare, I think Martha Waters is a good pick. And I personally like the second book much better than I liked the first book, just in terms of its like trope combo. Take that for what it's worth. I ended up giving this four and a half stars. This is one of my favorite historical romances I've read in quite a bit. And yeah, I just think it's super fun. Oh, I didn't even tell you what it's about. It's about um, a widow and a rake getting together and they have like a long history together and somebody tells the rake that he's bad in bed and he goes to the one woman who he knows won't lie to him about it. <laughs> he's bad in bed um, to try to get her to, you know, give him a, a, some tips or whatever. So yeah, it, it was very fun. It had some nice moments of gravitas to make the emotions feel, you know, like worthwhile, but it was just a really, I really enjoyed that one a lot. Oh, the only other thing on the six, I have a pre-order for Pride and Premeditation by Tears of Price, which is a YA mystery that is also a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. Sold. All things I love, so I'm very excited for this one. Uh, yeah, we'll see how I do with it, but that also comes out on the sixth. Then on the 13th, we've got The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. And this was an interesting one. This is YA fantasy. I mean, I guess 
guess I don't want to get into the full thing, but just basically the setup is, it's like, it's got a lot going on in it, but it's also kind of slow paced in the middle, but with like a really wowza ending, which made me very intrigued to keep going. Basically the setup is where our protagonist is a healer. Her, she was abducted and put into prison at the age of like seven. And this prison she goes to, most people don't even last six months. She ends up being there for 10 years by the time we, uh, we kind of join her. She is tasked with healing this queen who is leading a rebellion against the ruling order and she ends up sort of standing in her place doing like trial by ordeal. So I do think that the pacing in this one is off but the ending really hooked me into the next book. So for whatever that's worth um, that comes out on the 13th. Then on the 27th, we've got a few coming out. We've got Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto. And this is, I think sort of, it was described as a mystery rom-com. And I think our main character's aunties are going to help her find love and solve a mystery. It seems super cute. I saw some good early buzz for it. So I've got an advanced reader copy of that one that I'm excited to read. Also, Meant to be Immortal by Lindsay Sands comes out that day, which is like the umpteenth, or I say that, it's probably like the 30th something book in the Argent of Vampire series. I think if you are a fan of the series, it's got a lot of the same vibes that they normally have. It was fine. Not one of my favorite in the series, not one of the worst. Just sort of like, if you like the Argino vampires, just go ahead and read this one, it's fine. <laughs> Which seems dismissive, but like once you get kind of up there in some of these series, it's like, okay, don't start with this one. <laughs> But if you like the series already, you'll probably like this. And then on the 29th, there is a mystery that I have an advanced reader copy for called Her Last Holiday by C.L. Taylor. C.L. Taylor is an author I very much enjoy. Um, it's harder to get her books here in the US. You usually have to get them from the UK because I don't believe she has a US publisher anymore. But somehow I got approved for an arc. I don't know. Basically, main character's sister went missing on a wellness retreat a couple of years ago. And now the main character is going back there to try to find out what happened. There, she's kind of stuck on this retreat and there's mystery. So I, it sounds like it has sort of maybe an element of isolated close circle mystery, which is my actual favorite. So I think that this may have some elements in it that I really like from an author who I also know that I very much enjoy. Oh, I missed one on April 6th, The Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dannon. This is a rom-com where I think it's sort of like kind of a take on a fake dating trope, but it's like as an experiment. And I heard really good things about Rosie Dannon's first book last year, which was The Roommate, which had a play on like a sex worker kind of trope. Yeah, anyway, so I am excited to see what she does with this. It seems like she's sort of like an exciting new voice kind of a thing. And then on the 20th, we have Witches Steeped in Gold by Sinian Smart. And I believe that this is YA fantasy with witches and a healer. I feel like witches and healers are very like big tropes in like recently, there seems to be a lot of books with those elements in them. Those are both elements I like. So I am uh, looking forward to that one. And I've also heard very good things about it. And then the last one is that Fugitive Telemetry from Martha Wells comes out on April 27th. It is the sixth book in the Murderbot Diaries series. Uh, you can't, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a little sign back here that says join the Church of Murderbot. Everybody knows I'm a big proselytizer for the good news of Murderbot. Love this series. Very much looking forward to the next entry. Believe this one's going to be a novella again, not another novel. So that will be fun. And then moving into May, we've got a lot happening in May. So on the fourth is The Premonition, A Pandemic Story by Michael Lewis. I love the way that Michael Lewis does narrative nonfiction. And this is his take on talking about COVID. So I think this will be a really interesting narrative nonfiction pick from him. We've also got People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. And this is her second adult romance that she's putting out. And this one I believe is it's kind of like a friends to lovers take where back in the day, two friends sort of crossed the line into being lovers and it didn't go well. And now they're like trying to see if they can make that work again. Really enjoyed her book last year, which was Beach Read. I know a lot of you really enjoyed that one. It was a big hit. And uh, yeah, I've got an advanced reader copy of that one. So I will probably get a, be getting to that here in the month of March. Then I have an Arc of the Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. I'm actually hoping this may be my book today. And this comes out on May 18th. And the premise of this is a dating app that is based on your DNA. This woman 
gets matched to the founder of the company. So it's sort of like speculative romance, I guess. And I really love what Christina Lauren does. This is going to be their hardback cover debut. So congrats to them on that. That's a big milestone. I, I can be a little hit or miss with them, but I tend to like what they do on the more kind of rom com -y end of things. I've got an advanced reader copy of The Ivies by Alexa Dunn, who is a fellow YouTuber. She is an author tuber. And this is her debut YA thriller. And it's set at a boarding school. So I am very excited about that because that is a trope I love. And uh, I've read another book from Alexa, really liked her writing. So I think this should be one that I enjoy. And then I also got an arc of the next standalone thriller from Nora Roberts, which is called Legacy. That comes out on May 25th. And I'm very excited to uh, have an advanced copy of it because I love her and she's just one of my top comfort reads. So it's nice to have her kind of on deck ready to go for that. And on May 11th, we have A Master of Jen by P. Jelly Clark, which is the first full length book in his Jen series, Fatma, her series. We've had two novellas before this, and this is a fir the first novel. I gave this four stars. I did really enjoy this. I think it you can tell it's a first novel just in terms of some of the structure choices made. But in terms of just enjoying the characters, enjoying the world, having fun with the mystery, this is so good. This series is set in an alternative version of historical Cairo. And it's got kind of some steampunky type elements to it. But the magical element is that this dude accidentally opened up this portal, or I guess not accidentally, he purposely opened up this portal. And now like Jin and Ifrit and demons and zombies, like all of these things have come into our world. So it's our history, but different with like magic. And I just love the character work in this. And the mysteries are also I think pretty fun too. So if you like, uh, if you are looking for a new kind of version of something like a Kate Daniels or a Dresden Files kind of thing, I think this has a lot of the same kind of DNA to it. But it's a fresh take on that kind of urban fantasy genre. Okay, and then moving into June, first, we've got The Chosen and the Beautiful by Ni Vo. And this is being pitched as a speculative Vietnamese inspired take on The Great Gatsby. I've got an advanced reader copy, excited to read it. That sounds rad. I've also got uh, The Empress of Salt and Fortune on my TBR, which is a big hit from her from last year. So I may also try to get to that. But I think this take on uh, The Great Gatsby should be very intriguing. And then Dead Dead Girls, I've got an arc of this. It's Nikessa Afia, comes out on June 1st. And it is a historical mystery set in Harlem with a black protagonist. And I have to tell you, finding historical mysteries of this kind of tone and ilk with non white protagonists is not always the easiest. So I was just frankly excited to see something a little different coming out. And yeah, I like a historical mystery. I like something that's a little different in a historical mystery. So I'm excited that this may be a good start to a series I'm going to enjoy. And then um, on the first of June, we also have a dark and secret place by Jen Williams. I have an advanced reader copy of this. And I believe that the recommendation I got from this for this was from um, Jean Bookish Thoughts, if I'm remembering rightly, she made it sound really good. It's basically a thriller where a woman finds out that her mother had been corresponding with a serial killer. And thrills ensue from there. And that comes out actually on the eighth, sorry. The Tangle Root Palace by Marjorie M. Liu is a collection of speculative short stories that's coming out on the 15th of June. I love the monstrous series from Marjorie Liu. And I love the way her imagination works. I think this will be a really I've not read short stories from her, but I'm really excited to try short stories from her just based on what she's been doing with the monstrous graphic novel series. So I think that will be a very exciting pick. So then we also have on June 22nd, a book called Star Eater from Kirsten Hall, which I actually don't know that much about. I've been hearing a lot of early buzz for this as a like a really interesting speculative fiction pick for the year. And it says all martyrdoms are different. Alfreda Ron will avoid pregnancy if it kills her and one way or another, it will kill her. Though she's able to stomach her gruesome day to day duties, the realities of preserving the sisterhood of Etrium's magical bloodline horrifies her. She wants out whatever the cost. So when a shadowy cabal approaches Alfreda with an offer of escape, she leaps at the opportunity. So I just it seems like that's going to be very high jinxy. Um, it's possibly kind of dark, which can be my thing. And yeah, I think that I I've heard a lot of really good buzz 
for this one. So I'm excited to get my hands on a copy and find out kind of what the deal is for myself. And on the 29th, there's one called Gear Breakers by Zoe Hana Mikuda. This one is, the tagline is what got me on this. I love the cover art and it says, two girls on opposite sides of a war discover they're fighting for a common purpose and falling for each other. So it's speculative. It sounds like there's gonna be a romance. It's sapphic, like it's a little, it's just something a little different. So yeah, I think that that sounds like one that I will like. And then moving into July, Jennifer Eastep has a new fantasy romance series she's kicking off that starts with Capture the Queen. I have an advanced copy of this one and the tagline again was kind of what got me. I've heard, I've actually never read Jennifer Eastep's fantasy romance, but I've heard really good things about the first trilogy she had in this world that starts with Kill the Queen. And um, this one, the tagline intrigued me because it says a bold new heroine who protects her kingdom from magic, murder, and mayhem by moonlighting as a spy. Jenna Ripley has a reputation for, reputation for being a pampered princess who's more interested in pretty gowns, sparkling jewelry, and other frivolous things rather than learning how to rule the kingdom of Andavri. But her carefully crafted persona is just an act to hide the fact that Gemma is a powerful mad mind major and a spy. So I like spies. I like fantasy romance. I like, I mean, this just, this seems like it's going to be a good one for me. And then the Crystal Kingdom uh, edition of The Adventure Zone from the McElroy family comes out on July 13th. I love that original podcast. I've been very much enjoying the graphic novels as they've been coming out. And Crystal Kingdom is one of my favorite arcs in that original podcast. So I'm really excited to see kind of how they visualize everything for this one. Then I have uh, Grady Hendrix next thriller horror kind of thing, which is called The Final Girl Support Group. And that comes out on July 13th. And this is, it sounds sort of like Final Girls by Riley Sager from a few years ago, but basically there's like group therapy happening for these girls who have all been like the final girl in a serial killer's run. They've been meeting for years and then all of a sudden they start going missing. Who's getting them? Who's killing off the final girls? This, I really enjoyed um, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires last year. So I really like Grady Hendrick's actual writing style. And then this setup seems like one that I will very much enjoy. And then for for Your Own Good comes out on the 20th of July from Samantha Downing. And this sounds like a serial killer who's working at an elite boarding school as a teacher or like an elite private school as a teacher and like is serial killing within that community. And that just seems like sort of a variant on a boarding school or like elite private school that I've not seen in mystery thriller before. So I thought that sounded very intriguing. So I have, I have a copy of that. Um, so that should be good. And then on the 20th of July, we have Last Guard from Nalini Singh. So if you don't know, I started a podcast this year where I am rereading the entire Psy Changeling series and like deep diving into each book. And the, I think it's the 20th book overall in the series and the fifth book in the new season of it um, comes out on July 20th. A new Psy Changeling book is always a highlight of the year for me. So I'm very excited for that. And if you enjoy that series, definitely check out my podcast because I have a lot of love for it. And I've been doing a lot of nerdy deep diving into it. And then on the 27th of July is a new romantic suspense from Meg Tilly called The Runaway Heiress. I don't know anything about this one actually, but I've really enjoyed, Meg Tilly has these very interesting books that are like kind of suspenses, but they're tonally set like a small town romance. It's a very interesting like project she has going with her books that I, I, she's pretty unique in terms of the kind of style she's got going. So I'm always just interested in her new books. Um, so that comes out on July 27th. And then on July 3rd, we've got Say Goodbye by Karen Rose, which is the third in her Sacramento romantic suspense trilogy that's been going. And this trilogy has been following all of these different like murderous things around a cult in Northern California. And I've really been enjoying this trilogy a lot. I am a sucker kind of for thrillers that have some kind of culty element to them. I find those really interesting. And so yeah, this one has been really hitting the spot for me. And I'm hoping we're gonna find out. I think this is the last, I think it's a trilogy. I don't think we're getting more, I don't know. If so, I'm really excited to find out how it all wraps up. And if not, 
just to see how the storyline is progressing. So that's on the 3rd of August. And then on August 3rd as well, we've got A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. And this just sounded really dark and twisty. It says, for fans of Wilder Girls and Ninth House comes a dark, twisty, atmospheric thriller about a boarding school haunted by its history of witchcraft and two girls dangerously close to digging up that past. So we've got an elite school, we've got secrets from the past, and we've got a dark tone. All of these point to things that I should enjoy. And then How to Kill Your Best Friend by Lexi Elliott is on August 17th. And basically, I just think that this one sounds like her version of a kind of isolated closed circle mystery. I'm not sure if it's a true isolated closed circle mystery, but that is how it's described. Basically, everybody is brought to one place, people start dying, you have to figure out who done it. That's what the setup is sounding like it's a variant of. So sold. <laughs> I've got an advanced copy of that one. So I will definitely be reading it. And then on the 17th, we've got Battle Royale by Lucy Parker. And this is the a spinoff of the contemporary romance series she's had going, which has been set around like kind of the theater scene in London. And now it's going to be set I think around sort of like palace news coverage sounds like. Uh, I love Lucy Parker. I love the way she does contemporary. So I honestly don't need a super de detailed description of any of her books. I will always give them a try. I've got this on pre order. I'm very excited. And similarly, The Heart Principle by Helen Huang is the third in her The Kiss Quotient trilogy. And this one we are getting Oh, I can't remember his name right now. But he is the brother of the last main character in the last book, he's the brother and he is such a sweetie. And I'm really excited to see him get his own romance because I've really enjoyed him in the previous two books. So we're finally getting that on the 17th of August. And then My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones comes out on August 31st. And this one is a horror novel. And I think it has to do with like kind of Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of a vibe. That was what I got from the description. Um, I've not read something from him before, but I've really wanted I really would like to try something from him and the description of this one really clicked for me. So I'm hoping that this will be the one that gets me hooked into him overall. Moving into September, we've got Portrait of a Scotsman by Evie Dunmore on the 7th of September. And this one sounds like an, a marriage of convenience or like arranged marriage trope. And I really like her writing and I'm excited to see see what she would do with this kind of trope. Our main character will be a suffragette because that's what this series has been having in it. Um, so yeah, I'm just intrigued to see how she handles that trope. Her writing is very lovely. Um, it reminds me a lot of Courtney Milan. So anyway, I'm excited to give that one a go. And then From the Neck Up by Alia Whitley is a collection of speculative short stories that are coming out on the 14th of September. And I just I like speculative short stories. If I haven't mentioned that already, I think it's come up a couple of times in this video. So I've kind of just got my eye on that one as one I might enjoy reading. Roxane Gay has a book about writing coming out on September 15th. So Roxane Gay is one of my very favorite authors. Anytime she's putting out a new book, I'm going to be interested in it. And then Jennifer Lynn Barnes has the sequel to The Inheritance games coming out on September 16th, which is the Hawthorne Legacy. And I haven't read the first one yet, but I'm expecting I'm gonna love it because Jennifer Lynn Barnes has traditionally been pretty much my favorite YA mystery writer. So I'm assuming I'm gonna love this one. Um, and therefore we'll be excited for the sequel. And then Under the Whispering Door is the next TJ Klune speculative romancy kind of thing. I honestly he's kind of an auto buy for me in this kind of book. Um, because I just love the house in the Surly and Sea so much. I loved his actual writing style. It was so whimsical, so lovely. So it really kind of doesn't matter what this book is about. I'm gonna be interested in reading it. And then The Gilded Cage by Lynette Noni. I was talking earlier, The Prison Healer, the sequel to The Prison Healer comes out the same year and it's in October on the 12th. And uh, like I mentioned, I was very much left in suspense as to what was gonna happen at the end of the first book. So I definitely want to at least find out what happens in this second one. So I don't have to wait a full calendar year for it. I get it in the same year, which is lovely. And then the third book in Jenda Lucas series about a uh, small town Ren Fair life called Well Matched comes out on October 19th. I really love the first one. I was so so on the second one and this third one um, I'm very excited for because it is two characters I have been excited to see get together. So that's on the 19th of October. And that should be just a delightful kind of rom-commy vibe. We've got 
hot guy who uh, is always in a kilt at the Ren Fair every year, Mitch. Love him. So I'm excited to see him get his book. And then the last book that I have an actual specific date for that I wanted to mention is A Dance of Smoke and Steel by Mila Vane. That comes out on October 26th. And it is the third in her A Gathering of Dragons trilogy of fantasy romances. I love Mila Vane slash Mel Jean Brooke. Her writing is just really, really lovely. I, I don't know. I really love the way that she kind of sets the mood in her fantasy romances. This is a series I would describe as being as much fantasy as it is romance and vice versa. So I think it's a really nice sort of like transitional series for people. Like if you are a fantasy reader looking to get into romance or a romance reader looking to get into fantasy, this is one of my go to recommendations as one to give a try this series. So the third one comes out on October 26th. And then two books I'm also just going to wrap up with that I don't have a specific date for yet, but they are on my radar. First is The X Hex by Erin Sterling slash Ra Rachel Hawkins. Those are her two pen names. And it says pitched as Hocus Pocus in the Gilmore Girls Stars Hollow. A witch discovers her silly bad breakup ritual may have actually worked. So I think that that seems like a delightful speculative rom-com which is a vibe I'm into. And then last, but not even kind of least, <laughs> is Tread of Angels by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is her take on a mystery, a historical mystery, and it is a mystery based on the true story of the state of Sequoia becoming the 46th state of America in 1905, unifying five tribes around the area we know as Oklahoma until a mystery and theft of a train filled with gold threatens its fledgling government. So it says publication in spring 2021. The fact that we've not gotten more info on it makes me think that maybe that's not accurate, but love Rebecca Roanhorse, love her writing, and I love a mystery. This could not be more my jam. I'm so excited for when this one comes out. And I think those are all the books I wanted to talk about. There's so many. I know I had to fly through that really quickly. There's a lot of great books that are going to come out this year, guys. So let me know ones that you are excited for, ones that I mentioned, ones that I didn't mention. Let me know that in the comments below. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description description box below and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!